usually i finish my work i come back home a little late if i got the if i got late my father called me where where are you why no come back he was he was waiting for me my brother i feel this thing always now nobody wait for me Community members in Ozone Park come together a year after an imam and another man were shot to death near a Queens mosque. Sunday marked one year since the murder of Imam Malama Akanji and his associate Tara Udin. Now the two men were shot to death in broad daylight on the corner of 79th Street and Liberty Avenue as they returned home from their local mosque. It was um, 13 August 2016. I was not home. Uh, that day I was on uh, Hillside Avenue in Jamaica. It was a uh, known time, like uh, 1.45 p.m. Uh, my brother, my younger brother, immediate younger brother called me. Yeah, somebody showed my father. I, I think uh, he, he told me my fa father is dead already, but I can't believe this. When I reached the hospital, I saw the crowd here, just our community people, my relatives, my sister, my brother. We we was waiting one room. Then after one one hour later, doctor came and uh, took me to uh, see my father. I saw uh, one spot here on his eyes another is uh, another spot was here when i when i saw this situation i never believed this Today, the outraged Muslim community turned out in large numbers to pay their respects. Though police say the motive is still unclear, these mourners say they're sure the violence was the result of a hate crime. This is a hate crime. But government office, they say they don't approve for the hate crime. This one, the day one in the beginning, they think the second degree murder, but is our community push too much? They are agree to bound to district attorney to they put in the first degree murder, but they don't take it as a seriously as a hate crime. Still now, I have no idea whatsoever the why they don't recognize, say this is the hate crime. Imam Al Akunji, we know when he starts for our mosque. Believe or not, he is one of the best person I meet in my life. He is one of the best translator in the Quran, especially for the, our Friday, Jummah day, which is Friday, the big crowd. He explained to Quran, people are come earlier. 
Half hour earlier, because, or oh, listen to him, what he say, but what the say about our message to Muhammad. He can translate Arabic to Bengali, our language was Bengali, Arabic to Bengali, Arabic to little English. So that's why so many people like him. So a hate crime defined by 18 U.S. Code Section 249 is the actual or perceived crime towards someone because of a prejudice, meaning you hurt someone, either kill them or hurt them, just because they, you think they belong to a group of racial, religious, any social group, or because you know that they do belong to a social or religious or racial group. Um, I think they didn't charge the criminal with a hate crime because of a political agenda, uh, especially it is to maintain the reputation of the United States of being tolerant um, and then that, you know, Americans do not have hate within their communities, specifically in New York, where Cuomo, uh, Governor Cuomo prides himself for New York to be a safe space for diversity and a place where diverse people coexist together. America always has someone to hate on, you know, before it was the blacks, um, then after it was the Jews, and then after now we're at the hate Muslim era. Uh, but what directly correlates a hate crime nowadays, an increase in hate crime, is because of increase in um, exposure to racist language. There was a direct correlation when Trump spoke on the media and, you know, he was all over the news, print, visual, etc., there was an immediate report that they've been insulted, they've been physically attacked or they've been followed and harassed because they're Muslim. Um, so there, I saw a direct correlation in schools, in hospitals, on the streets, on buses, in grocery stores. And I believe that we're humans and we get impacted by words and we're influenced by words. And so when we allow and we give space for racist language to, to take over all our news and you know, TV channels and printed media, then of course racists are going to be encouraged to act on their racist uh, beliefs. Yes, I take that borrow mama. Next one. Next one. Mama said, Mama I want to. I want to go him and ask, ask him why he killed my father. Given the reason why you killed my father, uh, what fault was my father? We were we are waiting for the uh, decision. What is this? We believe in court. We believe in law, everything. I have one request to all people of the world uh, to pray for my father. May Allah give him Jannah. We know that he's martyr. There is no doubt he's going to Jannah.
Today brought us justice, but it did not bring us closure for the horrific crime that not only impacted our families, not only impacted our city, but was felt by Muslims across the world. A crime that shocked the conscience of our city and which defied all explanation. We thank the DA's office for its work in prosecuting Oscar Morel for having him convicted of the highest crime in New York state law and making sure that he will not set foot outside of prison as a free man. And today, when given the opportunity, Mr. Morel provided no such explanation, no such justification for the conduct that robbed these families of their husbands, their brothers, their fathers. There is a little bit of relief and the service of justice. I feel very proud as a New Yorker. I feel very proud as an American. The Imam and our leader, Brother Tarawuddin, will not be brought back to the family. Our condolences will always be with the families, and I hope this heinous crime will never, ever happen again in the human history. Is that finished? Yeah, almost finished. All right. There is nothing uh, too happy for me because never I, uh, I get to return my father.